You might be autistic if... Stick around to find out! Hi friends! My name is Claire and this is my channel! What's up, theory? Here, I make content about what it is like to live as an adult on the autism spectrum and whatever else feels good to me, so if that sounds good to you, or if you're feeling particularly gracious today, and I hope that you are, please go ahead and click the subscribe button, ring the bell. I almost forgot to mention that I put out videos three times a week. Click the like, click the like. If you already know that you're on the autism spectrum, it's most likely that sometimes you hear, feel, do something, and you think to yourself, wow, that is so autism. But maybe you don't know if you're on the spectrum yet, and you're wondering, am I? Could it be? Could it be possible that I'm on the spectrum? So I've put together a short list of you might be autistic if, just so that you could get the ball rolling, some thoughts maybe, am I on the autism spectrum? Should I look into seeing if I'm on the autism spectrum? Of course, I want to make a disclaimer that I am not a doctor, and these are my own thoughts, and they came from my own head. I'm not trying to diagnose you. You might relate to one of these things, or all of them, and you still may or may not be on the autism spectrum. So do your own research. This is meant as a fun way for us autistics to kind of giggle at ourselves. And also maybe if you hear these and you're thinking, wow, that sounds a lot like me, maybe I'm on the autism spectrum, maybe you'd wanna look into it further. So without further ado, you might be autistic if. You might be autistic if you've ever been pulled aside for the that was rude chat and were very confused about why that was happening. Autistic people often are regarded as rude and usually when we're told we're pretty confused because that never crossed our mind and wasn't our intention. Autistic people struggle with having a filter, but more so than that, they struggle with the social norms that come easily to neurotypical people. Two, you might be autistic if you've ever ghosted a situation with a quick nope and then walked out of the room. Here's another one of those social faux pas, but when autistic people get a sensory input that they can't handle and they know they're not gonna be handling it, well, you might see them go, nope, and just leave without any explanation or any word to you about what's going on or what's wrong. I will just dismiss myself from a situation when I feel that something is off or that I don't like it or that I'm not gonna be able to handle it. Three, you may be autistic if you have a closet full of different wardrobes to fit different social situations from trying to fit into different social groups. Because autistic people struggle to make friendships, they struggle to establish relationships, we don't understand the social norms, what we can do is observe what different groups of people are wearing and mirror those fashions and styles almost perfectly to appear that we fit into those groups. We usually end up not fitting into those groups because of other social issues that we have. Can you imagine that fitting into a group isn't just about what they're wearing? I, I didn't understand that for a long time. Four. You might be autistic if as soon as your teacher announced a group project, you were immediately upset and wanted to do the project on your own. Group projects are so hard for autistic people because we like to be in control of the situation and understand the entire output of the situation and we like that it relies on us. When you have to work with another person and you have social difficulties, you can struggle to delegate, share ideas, know what work to put in and what work to leave to someone else. It can be really difficult for you. So if you hated group projects, you might be autistic. Five, you might be autistic if you seem to be good at what everyone is bad at 
and really bad at what everyone seems to be good at. In autism, we can see a flipped measure of success when it comes to skill sets. So you might be really good at something like computer coding. It might come really easy to you because it's got patterns and it has rules and it makes sense, but something like remembering to shower could be really hard for you because it's part of your executive functioning and we struggle with executive functioning. So you might be really good at your one skill set from your special interest that everyone else looks at and says, wow, how could they do that? It's so hard, but you know, maybe you can't cook for yourself. Six, you might be autistic if you've ever had a meltdown in public due to sensory issues or sensory overwhelm. Don't need to say a lot about this, but if you are having meltdowns in public and you're an adult, it could be a sign that you're on the autism spectrum. I think back to a time where I was stressed out, overwhelmed, too much was happening at once, too much was happening that was overwhelming to my senses, the noises, the smells. I was in a restaurant and I had a breakdown. I had a meltdown. It was a really stressful time and I was crying and uh, needed some time to myself to just uh, recover because it was too much for me. Seven. You might be autistic if you know a lot of people and you're friendly with a lot of people but you have no real friends or you have no best friends. Before my diagnosis, I always wondered how people had these friendships that I didn't have. I didn't understand friendships. I wanted to know what made me so different that nobody wanted to be my friend. Why weren't people reaching out to me? Why didn't people spend time with me like other people spent time when it seemed like people were pretty friendly to me and, and people were open to me, but I just didn't have that connection with anyone. And now I know it's because I have a differently set up brain than neurotypical people and friendship is going to look different for me. And I also have more skills now to be a better friend. But if you're thinking, wow, I've never had any real friends. I don't connect with people in that way, but it seems like people are friendly to me, then you might be on the autism spectrum. Eight, you might be autistic if you are great at laying out big plans, but struggle to complete them because when things change, you are unable to execute your plan to the correct specifications. When autistic people lay out the perfect plan, we really struggle when there are changes in that plan or we struggle with having to do the plan in the exact order that we've set out. If anything changes or we get stuck or we're not understanding, we can really struggle to finish our plans or if our special interests change mid plan, then maybe we find ourselves unable to even focus on that plan anymore. Nine, you may be autistic if you are only interested in talking about a short list of topics you are interested in and other topics, you cannot stay on them and they're uninteresting to you and you will probably leave the conversation or just shut down because you don't care. This is one of those things where people think that autistic people are rude because we don't pay attention to conversations that we don't care about. Now, you can learn to do better with this, but the truth is we really do struggle when somebody starts talking about something we don't care about or doesn't affect us, we maybe stop paying attention as much as we should, or we don't know what to say unless we're talking about one of our special interests, in which case we will give you an entire college course in that topic. If you wanna hear about it, you can't shut us up. Number 10, you might be on the autism spectrum if you often feel that people are not hearing you correctly or they're misunderstanding what you want. Communication is really difficult for people who are on the autism spectrum. You don't have the eye contact. You don't have some of the verbal communication. You have a slower processing time. And because of that, you might feel like 
people aren't understanding what you want from them when you're talking to them about what you want from them. You might feel like you're not being heard when really you're just speaking a different language uh, because you're a different neurotype. What you're saying is not being processed by the listener as you're intended because your brain is wired differently from them. So if you feel like nobody ever understands what you're talking about and nobody ever listens to you and it feels like they're only half listening to you because they don't respond in the way that you're looking for, maybe you're on the spectrum. 11. You might be autistic if you struggle to do anything without a timetable or strict instructions or guidelines because if you are left to your own devices, you hardly produce anything at all. I've heard it said that autistic people are sometimes really great at high school education because everything is written out for you, exactly what you need to do, your exact schedule, exactly what you should learn, and how long it should take you to learn it. There is just a very rigid way that, at least in America, the high school education system works. Then you switch over to college and all of a sudden, you can study whenever you want. Things are a lot more open. Maybe you have a class that has no quizzes and you just have that one big exam at the end looming over you. And the tip to study for it is study everything we've studied in the semester. There's no timetables. There's no you should learn this by when. There's no system. Autistic people really, really struggle with this. 12. You may be on the autism spectrum if as a younger person you were labeled gifted, unique, and special, but that didn't seem to translate into adulthood. Ooh, that's very common for neurodiverse people, isn't it? So for a lot of autistic people, they are as a child kind of hailed and encouraged for being smart or creative or above average, but then when you get them into a normal life situation, they struggle to do their laundry. So if you're the kind of person who was supposed to be this academic genius and now you're struggling to find that other sock because you don't match up your socks, maybe you're on the autism spectrum. 13, and finally, you may be on the autism spectrum if you have functioning issues like forgetting to practice self-care, shower, brush your teeth, etc., forgetting to pay bills, forgetting to eat, forgetting to sleep, etc. As an autistic person, you will have executive functioning issues. Now, this is something that can also happen in other conditions like ADHD, etc., but autistic people struggle to keep a schedule, which is why we do so well on a schedule because we don't naturally think every morning, okay, wake up, eat and have breakfast, brush your teeth, take a shower, get ready to go. If we're on that schedule and we're being held to that schedule, it's great. But once it's up to us and what we want to do and what our schedule is going to be, we kind of flounder. So if you're struggling with executive functioning issues, maybe you're on the autism spectrum. Well, that's my short list of you might be on the autism spectrum if... Did you relate to any of these? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. I know a lot of people are going to have questions after this. Uh, these related to me, does that mean I'm on the autism spectrum? The answer is, of course, maybe. I just want to remind everyone that autism symptoms are human symptoms. So if you're experiencing one or all of these, it could just be that that's who you are as a human and maybe you're not on the autism spectrum. But if you feel like you resonate with all of them, you feel really strongly about it, then definitely do some research and uh, check it out for yourself. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye guys. Bye.